This is an alarm sounding in a police station somewhere in the United States. The alarm is meant for you. It's a warning to wake up, to shake loose from the grip of the nation's nightmare. The nightmare described by Senator Herbert O'Connor. Our Senate Crime Investigating Committee has found alarming instances of syndicated crime and of unhealthy alliances with law enforcement officials. The remedy is in the hands of the people who must act before it is too late. Nation's Nightmare. CBS and its affiliated stations, in cooperation with law enforcement agencies throughout the country, present a new documentary series on the pattern of organized crime in America, its shape, its form, who runs it, and what can be done about it. Every voice and sound you will hear has been recorded from real life. No actors are used. Now, here to report to you on the nation's nightmare is the noted CBS newsman, Bill Downs. A nightmare is a bad dream. You can wake up in the morning and it's over. You can forget it. But the nation's nightmare of organized crime does not disappear the morning after. It's still there, harder, sharper, and more tortured than any dream. We start our series of six programs on the nation's nightmare with the stuff dreams are made of. Marijuana, heroin, cocaine, commonly known as dope. This, our first program, deals with the narcotics traffic and drug addiction. Call 106 to 107, go to the first district right away. You've heard a lot about dope the last few weeks, but here is a sound you have not heard before. CBS reporter Dave Moore was patrolling with a New Orleans police car when a call came through about a commotion just off Rampart Street. A man hopped up on marijuana had gone berserk. Our reporter recorded the sounds of that man, the crying of his mother, the screams of the neighbors. You won't like this sound, but it's important that you hear it. It expresses more than any words can do the savagery, the terror, the torture of the victims of dope. The inhuman growling you're about to hear is a man. <laughs> There's a body of opinion that holds to the idea that marijuana causes no ill effects. Anyone who has heard that sound knows better. And that sound can be heard across the country, wherever the marijuana plant grows, and it grows in open fields almost everywhere. It can be heard where the plant does not grow, but where the peddlers do. Marijuana and the more dangerous drugs, heroin and cocaine, the deadly triumvirate of dope. Where can you buy them? Well, listen to this beautiful 21-year-old girl addict as she gives Senator O'Connor and the Crime Investigating Committee the word about prevailing prices and the state of the market. In Cincinnati, my hometown, uh, you can buy a capsule of heroin there for $3 or $4. It all depends how well you know the people. In Cleveland, the last time I was there was sometime last year, I paid two and a half dollars for a capsule of heroin. In New York, it's a dollar. In Chicago, it's two and a half dollars a capsule. Add to that list Philadelphia, Washington, Baltimore, Detroit, New Orleans, or any crowded metropolitan city, your city, and you have the centers of dope addiction. It's not hard to find a dope addict and record his story. All you need is a contact and a portable tape recording machine. This boy is 19 years old, married, and has two children. We interviewed him in the slum area where he lives. Been taking dope. Since I was 13, every day that I go to work, and I think that when I come back home, I could walk by the guy with it, and he wouldn't try to tell me nothing. And every time I try to pass him, he tells me, you don't want anything today? What I say, yeah, I'll give me a couple, and I think I can make it with that. And I end up back right, right there again, buying some more, spending the money that I just made, 
Every time I get paid, I owe him enough money that I can't even give my wife enough money to support the family. I mean, the, fam the kids go hungry sometimes, and I figure I'm real wrong. And if anybody could actually do something for me, I would gladly appreciate it because I can't live the rest of my life fooling around with this dope. How many drug addicts are there? Well, no one really knows, but the man best equipped to pin down that elusive figure is Harry J. Anslinger, Commissioner of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics. He gave us this estimate. We can say with fair accuracy that there are 50,000 drug addicts over the age of 21 in the United States. The increase in the younger age group would be certainly not more than 10,000, and this agrees with Army rejections of age groups under 21. A hard core of 60,000 addicts, an immediate potential of 300,000. And this does not include the uncounted number addicted to sleeping pills or using marijuana. Where did they come from? Why haven't we heard about them before? It seems that the adult of the species has gotten a little out of touch with things. The kids seem to have known about it for some time. We went up to Central Park in New York City. A carousel was playing. We questioned some kids about dope and came up with a lexicon of narcotic language. Do you know these words? Junk, pusher, reefer, deck, mainliner? Well, junk is the stuff, the dope, that they sell. Or dope pusher. Is a guy that go around trying to sell narcotics to young kids. A reefer is a marijuana cigarette. A deck is a package of marijuana cigarettes. The same as you buy a pack of cigarettes, they buy a deck. Well, the main line is when you is, is a big dope when you shoot it right into the vein with a hypo syringe. Ask the kids if you want to know about dope, they'll tell you. How about it, kids? Do you know anyone who's died from taking dope? I know a lot of people around my, I know a lot of people around 130, 138th Street where I live and 139. Well, uh, I know a lot of uh, uh, several different boys that they took dope and they died from. Blair said they took a needle and she's dead now. She died. I know her. I know she was going with a boy in our block. Can you tell an addict by looking at him? How about it, kids? I mean, you can tell. You can you can look at a person and tell if they take it. Some people, some people, some people, you can look. Some of them lose weight. Their eyes begin to close on. They got that glassy look. You can tell if some people take it. Well, now tell us, kids, why do people start taking dope? The psychologists say it's emotional maladjustment, but we grown-ups are pretty dumb about these things. Explain it to us simple-like, won't you? Oh, I said a lot of people take dope because they have a lot of worries and they want to escape them, so to hear that dope makes you feel good and get your worries, and that's why a lot of people take it. A lot of people do it for, like, for the so thrill of it. Our teacher, our teacher told us in school <laughs> that teenagers, a lot of them take dope because uh, uh, one in the crowd starts and they're afraid to be called a sissy or chicken, and then they all go in and start. She said a lot of teenagers have very weak minds. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you, you, I'm going to tell you something. New York will take something of anything that's new. I'm going to tell you. It's the satisfaction of something exciting. Something adventurous, you know. Anything. If you if you developed a, a a new kind of food, everybody would try it. Everybody would try it. Curiosity. That's all. Curiosity. That's the, that's the only. That's what starts it off. Curiosity. Thanks, kids. Just wanted to know. <laughs> 